State officials lay out the groundwork for the Get Nebraska Growing Task Force, which aims to identify and communicate the best practices and guidelines to reopen economic sectors impacted by COVID-19. KBB.TV News starts right now. From your trusted source for news in western Nebraska and eastern Wyoming, this is KNEB.TV News. Presented by Platte Valley Companies, premier provider of financial services. Hello, I'm Ryan Murphy. This is KNEB.TV News, powered by Platte Valley Companies. Thanks for joining me. In our top story, Governor Pete Ricketts announced the formation of a business task force to restore growth to Nebraska's economy. Nebraska Department of Economic Development Director Tony Goins will chair the task force and join the governor at Monday's media briefing to talk about the mission of the task force. The purpose will be to identify and communicate best practices that, and guidelines that will help us safely reopen our economic sectors that have been impacted by COVID-19. We've already started to engage advisors in various industries and associations such as the barber, restaurant, and the retail associations. And we're working closely with our chambers of commerce who are intimately acquainted with the concerns of the business community. Additionally, Governor Ricketts gave an update on the Test Nebraska initiative, which will include upcoming testing sites in the Omaha and Grand Island areas. Well, Unified Command confirms one new case for COVID-19 in Cheyenne County. The latest case is a woman in her 30s and is a close contact of a previously positive case. PPHD officials say the investigation is complete. Close contacts will be quarantined and actively monitored twice daily for fever and respiratory symptoms by public health officials. To date, there have been 45 cases, with 28 of those patients recovered. All of Kimball's County's 10 cases have recovered and are out of isolation. Four of Cheyenne County's six cases have recovered with 14 of the 27 cases in Scottsbluff County recovered and out of isolation, and Box Butte and Morrill counties each have one case. And statewide, two more Nebraska counties reported their first cases of COVID-19 to the Department of Health and Human Services on Monday, one in Cedar County and one in Valley County. The total number of COVID-19-related deaths in the state to date is 55, according to the DHHS data dashboard, and yesterday's count of 56 included a death erroneously entered into the electronic system and has since been removed from that total count. The state's total case count is 3,358, with 330 new cases being reported yesterday. Well, coming up after the break, going to be some hot temperatures across the region this week and a chance for some isolated thunderstorms as well. Bill Boyer's got your full forecast right after this on KNEB.TV News. Local lending. We're here for you from start to finish. Keeping money in our economy. Supporting local jobs. Giving back to our community. Investing in entrepreneurship. Making our quiet towns a destination. At Platte Valley Bank, we support local because we are local. Take your career to the next level with Chadron State College's online Master of Business Administration program, taught by experienced professors who care about your success. The accredited, fully online MBA program is backed by CSE's more than 100 years of education leadership. Flexible, eight-week courses let you work at your own pace, wherever you are, and CSE's experienced professors are committed to your success. Chadron State College, real people, real results. Join us today at csc.edu. is KNEB.TV weather from the KNEB Storm Center, your trusted source for weather. Quite quiet here across the region. Other than the winds, the winds are still pretty gusty out here uh, as we go through the next couple of hours. They will come down overnight. Skies are going to be clear, though, and we have sunshine breaking out for tomorrow. So winds will decrease uh, overnight. Tomorrow, really a fantastic top 10 day. 
uh, if I'm uh, quite honest with you. Warmest day of the week is going to be Thursday before some rain and storms build in for the weekend. Hit 82 yesterday after a morning low of 40. Another trace of precip from some gusty showers that moved through last night. That's about it. Uh, 75 hundredths for the month and 220 for the year. As you can imagine, with all this uh, wind out here, we still have fire weather warnings. These are red flag warnings out for all of western Nebraska, northeastern Colorado, through most of the Cornhusker State till 8 o'clock tonight. Those high wind warnings up in portions of, of uh, South Dakota. And this flood advisory, it's covered up. You can't see it, but down here uh, around uh, the Llewellyn areas where that flood advisory remains in effect. Temperature wise right now, not bad. 66 in McCook at 65 in Hastings, 79 in Hayes. Certainly a lot cooler than where we were yesterday. Not upper 70s and low 80s, but low to mid 60s for most of us here across the region. Ogallala at 67 and 57 as you cut across to the northwest up around Lusk. Boy, here's the story though. Winds, they are howling still. 30 mile an hour sustained winds all across uh, most of the region here. 25, 30, 35 gusts over 45 at times today. Uh, gusts even approaching 50 in many areas. It has been a windy, windy afternoon and will be a windy evening. But really by nine, eight, nine o'clock tonight, winds will die off pretty quickly. So here by eight o'clock, we see clear skies and uh, winds subsiding overnight. Uh, they'll get uh, down into the uh, five to 10 mile an hour range, much more manageable. Lows tonight gonna be in the low to mid thirties here across Western Nebraska and Southeastern Wyoming. Back to tomorrow, uh, we're gonna start the day with sunshine. We'll roll through the early afternoon hours and it's gonna remain sunny out there. Uh, not much going on weather-wise into tomorrow evening. Still lots of sun and uh, quiet conditions here across Western Nebraska and Southeastern Wyoming, really all the high plains tomorrow. And the warmth builds back into the region we're going to be in the low to mid 70s tomorrow. Really a fantastic day tomorrow, and it's going to turn downright warm uh, as we go into Sunday. And you can see nothing uh, here over the next 36 hours in terms of precip. Let's look at uh, tonight's lows down around 34. Gusty winds diminish after midnight, 20 to 40 mile an hour early, down to 5 to 10. Otherwise, just lots of stars. Lots of sun tomorrow, a sunny, gorgeous day, 75. Uh, that's about perfect when you can say sunny in 75 and 5 to 10 mile an hour winds. Yeah, it's going to be a fantastic one tomorrow. Even warmer on Thursday. Uh, highs uh, into the upper 80s. Not sure where all those hot messages uh, come along from in there. Uh, Friday, we're looking at uh, low 80s. Saturday uh, and Sunday in the low 70s. Then Monday and Tuesday of next week, windier with the chance of some uh, showers on Wednesday or Monday rather. Again, scattered thunderstorms start Friday all the way through the weekend into the early portions of next week as uh, it gets back to closer to normal here, but uh, certainly uh, at least going to stay a bit active and give us some chances of some much needed rain for the weekend. This is Karen's land. It's been here a long time, and so is she, along with Mojo. The first fence post went up here. Now there's 5,000 of them. After the storm, she started the cleanup here. This is more than just land, it's home. Karen runs with us on a John Deere 3E Series tractor, because who says a day's work has to take all day? Nothing runs like a deer. Search John Deere 3E Series for more. Visit 21st Century Equipment in Alliance, Torrington, Scottsbluff and Bridgeport, or visit 21stCenturyEquipment.com. As farmers make plans to return to their fields for spring planting, we urge farmers to be alert to the dangers of working near overhead power lines. Electricity is one of the most overlooked, yet deadly hazards of working on a farm. Beware of increased height when loading and transporting equipment on trailers. Avoid raising the arms of planters or cultivators or raising truck beds near power lines. So let's take extra caution this spring planting season. This message brought to you by Roosevelt Public Power District, your touchstone energy partner, the power of human connections. At TC and More in Scotts Bluff, we have toys and puzzles for your children, or they make a great gift. TC and More has craft activities, pretend play toys, and dozens of puzzles and games for all ages. We also have the largest supply of Melissa and Doug toys, and we still carry all of your classroom essentials. Remember to like TC and More on Facebook. TC and More, 1621 Broadway, beautiful downtown Scotts Bluff. Welcome back. The Platt Institute hosted a webinar late last week with Creighton professor and economist Ernie Goss to discuss COVID-19 and its impact in Nebraska's economy. 
According to their latest data, over the last five weeks, roughly 7% of Nebraska's workforce has made their first claims for unemployment benefits, resulting in a loss of 96,000 jobs, with a total financial impact of $834 million. Goss says his data shows that the ag sector here in Nebraska will also be hit significantly. And so the farmer out there is facing very tough times and our numbers will begin reflecting that. But I would argue it's going to take some time to pick up the impacts in agriculture as we move down the road. Goss also says debt levels in Nebraska are rising and bankers are reporting a 30% increase in delinquency rates on loan payments. Well, a 38-year-old Gehring man has been arrested following a 2019 investigation conducted by the Wing Drug Task Force. Christopher Gompert was arrested on Wednesday on two counts of distribution of a controlled substance. Court documents say that on two separate occasions on June 25th, Gompert sold $50 worth of methamphetamine to a CI working for the Wing Drug Task Force. A warrant for his arrest was issued after the Nebraska State Patrol Crime Lab confirmed that the substance did test positive for the drug and the warrant was served on April 22nd. Gompart was scheduled to make his first appearance on the two felony charges yesterday in Scottsbluff County Court. And coronavirus is having a devastating impact on our local, state, national travel and tourism industry and the entire American economy as a whole. Carla Needon Streaks with the Gehring Convention and Visitors Bureau tells KNB News that National Tourism Week 2020 commemorations locally will be held virtually with events recognizing the tourism industry's strength, selflessness, and resiliency. Our Travel and Tourism Week observances for 2020 are definitely going to have a different look locally, regionally, and statewide. Um, we're going to be doing virtual activities uh, in lieu of being able to do our traditional in-person uh, week of events. We've planned some what we hope will be very exciting um, and engaging um, virtual activities that will start on Monday, May 4th and run through Friday, May 9th. Contact Streaks or Brenda Lysey of the Scottsbluff Area Visitors Bureau for details on joining the virtual Zoom events next week. Well, coming up after the break, Shabella Guzman will be in with a check-in on Ag News. She'll have that right after this on KNEB.TV News. A guy brought me on a first date to Runza. And I'm like, are you trying to talk to me while I'm eating Runza? No, slow your roll. Don't get in the middle of this. This chair is way too big. It's perfect for us. This one's tiny. That's cause it's mine. Hey, this chair is just right. This bed is way too hard. It's perfect for me. This bed is way too soft. Ah, just what I needed. This bed is just right. So come on over to Leaves Heads. Small business feels anything but small. That's why there's First National Bank Small Business Free Checking, so you can focus on what matters most. This is KNEB TV Ag News from the First National Bank Ag Desk. First National Bank of North Platte, the bank to think of first. The Bridgeport FFA chapter is getting ready to open up its greenhouse for the annual spring plant sale. COVID-19 has made attending school difficult as everyone is home, which meant it was difficult to get the greenhouse ready. Bryce Deaver, Bridgeport FFA chapter president and a senior at BHS, explained the challenge. Due to the coronavirus, um, we can't really have too many people in here and school is not going on, so we do not have classes going on. So I have taken it upon myself to make sure we have plants to sell and make money. Deaver said the plants were already purchased by the chapter and they began growing some in February before the shutdown. After the schools closed, he became pretty much the only person spearheading the project. The plant sale mostly goes towards the payment of our greenhouse because we have such of a state of art um, system in here. It costs a lot of money, not only for expenses every year, but just the cost of building this beautiful greenhouse. 
Deaver said he has had some help from other FFA members, but the changes brought on by COVID-19 made communication difficult. He says everyone is really excited to see the greenhouse open on Friday, and they've already received some orders. He gave us an idea of what is available. Um, for flowers, I would say we have a pretty wide selection. We have quite a few. Um, the place is really full. Um, we have both fillers and your regular annuals like petunias, geraniums. The Bridgeport High School FFA Greenhouse also has succulents, cacti, and vegetables. Opening day for the annual plant sale at the greenhouse will be Friday from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. The plant sale will run every Friday through Monday during May. I'm Chabella Guzman in Bridgeport with KNEB.TV News. Why do I have First National Bank's free checking? For all the things that could happen. Like the fact that they automatically forgive one overdraft fee every year and they won't charge a fee if I accidentally overdraw my account. Up to $20. Best of all, if I use another bank's ATM, my bank won't charge me a fee. When things don't go as planned, it's nice to feel protected. Switch today. Now more than ever, you need an affordable unlimited plan that fits your family budget. That's why Vieira Wireless is introducing our better unlimited plan. It's our best priced unlimited plan ever, starting as low as $30 a month for four lines of unlimited talk, text, and high-speed data. Want high-definition video with rollover high-speed hotspot data? Then choose our best or ultra unlimited plans. The best value plans in America for everyone. Vieira Wireless, are you ready for better? When it comes to helping local folks with the loans and financial advice they need, we don't horse around. Our only goal is to help you and your family achieve your financial goals with the right loans and savings products. So if you want to bank with people that care about you and your financial needs, stop by or give us a call. First State Bank. We're big on you. Member FDIC. Online at fsbcentral.com. Well, let's take a look what's happening on today's community calendar.
that's a look at today's community calendar brought to you by First State Bank, honoring those who give back. Nominate your community champion at fsbcentral.com. At Elite Physical Therapy, we provide preventative and rehabilitative treatments that maximize function and promote well-being for patients of all ages. With two locations in Scottsbluff and Gearing, we offer the convenience of you choosing your location with the same great services no matter where you go. Stop into one of our locations today in Scottsbluff at 214 West 27th Street or in Gearing at 10th and M Street and see what Elite Physical Therapy can do for you. Treatment you need and care you deserve. At Platte Valley Bank, we want you to plan for tomorrow Will you enjoy today. With our personalized trust and estate planning services, our trust services can help you do just that. When it comes to estate planning, you should seek professional help. And when you do, you should have confidence in the financial institution you choose to handle your trust. At Platte Valley Bank, we pride ourselves in keeping our trust operations local and serving our friends and neighbors. We offer a highly personalized, full line of personal trust and estate planning. Give us a call today and see how our trust services can help you. And finally tonight, a documentary years in the making chronicling the career of one of the Panhandle's most well-known faces and voices in the news industry is finally complete. In a Facebook post, documentary producer Mark Meisenheimer says Legacy of a Newsman, the film looking at the career and life of longtime Panhandle TV broadcaster Jerry Deshong, is finished and available for viewing. DeShong spent 50 years at KDUH Television in Hay Springs and Scottsbluff before being named to the Nebraska Broadcasters Association's Hall of Fame and being inducted into the Gold Circle Society of the Rocky Mountain Southwest Chapter of the National Academy of Television and Art Sciences. Meisenheimer, a former KDUH reporter and fellow producer Jake Peterson, made the announcement this week that the documentary was ready for viewing and says it's been an incredible journey. Yeah, we, we really felt you know, as you know, as we got you know deeper into this, and it was our, our initial focus was you know more surrounding Jerry, but just out of necessity and, and how the story evolved, it it really you know there's a, a a story in there about the evolution of media, and Jerry's story falls within that. He's kind of a microcosm, you know, of of what is going on you know around the country with media in general and. The film definitely addresses that. The full documentary can be viewed on Amazon Prime. Well, that does it for us this time. Thank you so much for tuning in. Stay safe out there. We'll see you here next time.